Hi everyone and welcome to this webinar where we'll be looking at things to look for when buying a water filtration system. My name's Darren and I'm the Queensland sales rep at Island Water Solutions. We'll start out with a brief recap of the municipal water treatment process which we covered in our previous webinar and why home water filters are important. Then we'll go into the different filters we have available and which one might suit you the best. We'll also have a brief look at how reverse osmosis works and at how often filter cartridges need to be replaced. In our last webinar, we looked at the different types of contamination issues that our municipal water authorities have to deal with and the water treatment process. While that process generally provides relatively safe drinking water to most of us here in Australia, it does have a few shortcomings. The first is that the treatment process may not always get everything. An example would be traces of legal and illicit drugs that end up passed into our groundwater and catchment areas. The second is added disinfectants such as chlorine which can dry out sensitive hair and skin and not to mention make water taste bitter and quite unpleasant. Chlorine is added to kill off pathogens and while our water supplies are constantly monitored it is possible some pathogen outbreaks may go undetected for short periods of time and make its way to our taps before water authorities have noticed it and raise the chlorine level to deal with it. The third is that the treated water gets to our homes in pipes which in many cases are aging and corroded. There's also been some reports that due to plumbing errors and failures, drainage water has been discovered to have leaked back into the mains water pipes. The last is fluoride which many people don't want and is regarded by some people as unnecessary in a place like Australia which has access to good dental hygiene practices including fluoridated toothpaste. So the first thing to consider is how much do you love or hate what's coming out of your tap? What level of filtration do you really need? Almost all drinking water filters use some form of carbon filtration, while the best and most effective filters use more than one type of filtration media. Why would products have more than one filter type? Because different filter types are effective at removing different types of contaminants. The most common types of media are carbon and or activated carbon, ceramic filters, metallic alloy, carbon block resin and reverse osmosis membranes. Each filter medium has its strengths and weaknesses. For example, carbon filters are excellent at removing a broad range of contaminants including chlorine but are less effective at removing minerals like fluoride which is a good thing for some people but not so good for others. Also, when we filter out minerals we don't want, we're also filtering out minerals that we might want to retain like calcium and magnesium. There's many types of water filters to choose from, from simple single stage jugs which you fill manually. These are great if you're on a budget or if you're in temporary accommodation or if you generally trust the safety of our tap water but you want to remove larger contaminants and chlorine for better tasting water. The next level is benchtop filters with a freestanding water filter unit that sits next to your sink and attaches to the end of your faucet via hoses. These have a diverter valve that engages the filter when you want filtered water. These are very easy to install and can be done by most people in just a few minutes. Next we move into under sink filters which attach to your cold water line under the sink and provide filtered water via a separate dedicated drinking water faucet. These keep everything out of sight under the sink but if you're in rental accommodation drilling a hole in the sink may not make your landlord happy. Also if you're not handy with tools you may have to consider the cost of a plumber or a handy person to come and do it for you. If you'd like to enlist the services of a plumber, we have several listed in the where to buy section on our website at www.ilandwater.com.au. Under sink filters also include reverse osmosis RO filters, which have a separate holding tank for filtered water, as well as connection to the drain for wastewater. These provide the highest level of filtration and will filter out almost everything, but they do have a couple of drawbacks, including requiring power to operate in most cases, and they produce wastewater. Okay, so first we'll look at the three stage filtration systems like the Benchtop Easy Aqua 250B and the Undersink Easy 250BU pictured here. With these systems, no water is wasted and health promoting minerals like calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, potassium, sodium, selenium, germanium, and so on are preserved. They're also simple to install and don't require power to run. The benchtop system doesn't require any holes to be drilled in the sink and just has an attachment that fits onto the existing tap. These are great if you can't drill a hole in your sink or if you don't want to pay someone to do it. The undersink version is tidier with just the new faucet visible above on the sink, but they do require drilling a hole and attaching the inlet to the existing cold water inlet under the sink. Apart from that, the filtration level is exactly the same between the two units. The first stage polypropylene or PP filter targets larger particles like dirt and rust. The element material conforms to the NSF42 standard and is FDA compliant. It's good for around 3000 litres or about 6 months for an average household of 4. 
The second stage is a finer grade granular activated carbon or GAC filter for chemical substance removal. These are constructed by heating coconut shells to turn them to carbon and then further crushing them down into granules. Activated carbon is positively charged and therefore able to remove negative ions from the water such as chlorine as well as heavy metals like lead, arsenic, cadmium and chromium. It also removes VOCs, that is volatile organic compounds, like petrol, benzene, formaldehyde and solvents, which are usually responsible for any unpleasant odours in water. Since the water has already gone through the PP filter before it gets to this one, it has a longer life before it needs replacement. They're generally good for around 6,000 litres, which works out to around one year for a family of four. The third and final stage is an EM medium biological filter for the removal of microorganisms like bacteria, viruses and microbial cysts. EM medium is a technology developed for the reuse of water in space programs. These filters are also good for around 6,000 litres or one year for an average household of four. EZEX EM medium is characterised by having up to 99.9999% BRE, which stands for bacterial removal efficiency, while still maintaining a high flow rate. Most other products on the market tend to only promise 99.99%, which may not sound like much of a difference, but at a microscopic level, that's the equivalent of removing 10,000 microbes versus 1 million in a given quantity of water. Here's a video showing the installation process for the Easy Aqua 250BU. Installation involves firstly turning off the water to your home, if the outlet under the sink doesn't have a tap to allow this, locate the mains outside the building and turn it off there instead. It's a good idea to run the tap a while before you disconnect the hose to get rid of any water in the system as well. What we want to end up with is the inlet hose to the water filter connected into the cold water hose leading to the existing sink tap, and the outlet hose from the filter leading to a new faucet on the sink to dispense the filtered water. So we can start out by drilling a 12mm hole where we want the faucet to go on the sink. Alternatively, an L-bracket is also provided to mount the gooseneck faucet onto a vertical surface to suit other situations you might have. Fit the faucet through the hole and screw the lock nut into place. Now use the plastic joiner to connect the filter outlet hose to the new faucet. Disconnect the cold water hose and wrap the outlet in new thread sealing tape ready for the hexagonal joining piece. Thread sealing tape is your friend here, make sure you use plenty of it on the hexagonal joining piece as well, as well as all threaded connections. And tighten the joining piece into place. Give the ball cock valve a liberal wrap of thread sealing tape. And screw it into place on the hexagonal joining piece. Now attach the EZEC inlet hose to the ball cock valve. Mount the filter base in a suitable position on the side of the cabinet. Attach the inlet hose from the ball cock valve to the EZEC filter and the outlet hose up to the new faucet. Now reattach the cold water hose to the sink tap and tighten with a suitable spanner. Now we can turn the water back onto the house. It's recommended to run the water through the new filter system for a few minutes to wash out any particles that may have come loose post manufacture. It's also normal to get a bit of extra air at this time, which will give the water a bit of a milky appearance, but that's nothing to worry about and it will go away in time. For an average family of four drinking the recommended eight glasses of water per day, it's recommended to change the PP filter every six months and the carbon and biological filters once per year. The filters are easily removed by rotating them counterclockwise until you feel five clicks and then lift the filter out. Installing the new filter is a reversal of the same procedure. Three, four, five. And that's the Easy Aqua 250BU Undersink Water Purifier. Okay, the next level is Reverse Osmosis or RO systems. Osmosis is the natural process by which molecules of a solvent, that's our water in this case, tend to pass through a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated one. 
To those who are unaware of this process, on the left side of this diagram, we have pure water and salt water separated by a semi-permeable membrane. If we leave it like that for long enough, we'll find that the level of the pure water will drop and the level of the salt or impure water will rise as the concentration level of the water equalizes. Reverse osmosis is achieving the opposite of that by using pressure to force the impure salt water through the semi-permeable membrane to the fresh water side, leaving the salt and other impurities behind. I'll include a link to a great animation explaining how reverse osmosis works in more detail in the description below. One issue with RO systems is what to do with the leftover concentrate. If you don't like the idea of wastewater going down the drain, the water rejected by RO systems can be diverted and stored for multiple uses, such as cleaning cars or watering your garden. It's important to assess your feed water quality before investing in an RO system. These systems are affected by the water temperature and feed water pressure. If the water pressure exceeds 80 psi or 500 kilopascals, a pressure limiting valve on the water inlet is required. Similarly, a lack in water pressure, let's say under 40 psi, will reduce product water for which the aid of a booster pump might be necessary. Contaminants such as large particles, iron concentration or a high level of hardness in feed water can cause clogging of the RO membrane which can decrease its life. As a rule of thumb, RO systems are not recommended for non-potable water since its ongoing use may cause fouling of the membrane as bacteria can begin to grow through the pores of the membrane causing bacteria creep. No matter where you live, there's a lot more than just H2O in your home's water. If you're using tap water for cooking, you might prefer to remove chlorine to improve the taste. Too much chlorine will not only cause the food to taste odd, it can discolour it as well. Most systems are easy to install and maintain and fit neatly under the sink. Plus, if you don't like the taste of your tap water or if you're concerned about what might be in it, there's a good chance you're buying bottled water all the time. Those plastic bottles create a lot of waste as they all too often go unrecycled and end up in landfills. However, with water filter systems, you can make the sensible choice of getting clean, great tasting water right in your home. Many families who start using water filters find themselves drinking more water and less sugary juices, sport drinks and soft drinks, which is not just better for the waistline, but better for the wallet as well. Eileen Water Solutions carries two types of RO systems for households. The Clean Pure RO2000 pictured here is a pump powered five stage system with a separate 14 litre holding tank, so there's always plenty of filtered water available on tap. The first stage filters water through a polypropylene PP filter to remove larger particles like dirt and rust. The second stage granular activated carbon or GAC filter is a finer grade filter. The third stage chlorine taste and odour or CTO filter takes things a step further by targeting chemicals and volatile organic compounds which can cause odour and bad taste. In the fourth stage the reverse osmosis membrane filters out microscopic organisms, bacteria and viruses before storing water in a holding tank. In the final stage, the water from the tank travels through a post-carbon filter as an extra level of precaution before reaching the tap. Alia's ROC 188 and 189 compact RO systems are similar five-stage systems to the Clean Pure RO 2000, but in this case the tank is a little smaller at 8.3 litres. This is contained within the case of the unit which makes it incredibly compact and ideal for tidy installations where space is limited. The ROC 189 has a powered pump and warning lights for any detected problems such as leaks or a high TDS value and a notification when a filter change is due. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. The ROC 188 model is almost exactly the same but it doesn't have a pump and therefore doesn't require power to operate. Here we see the open case of the ROC 188 and 189 systems showing the filter cartridge locations. The cartridges are fairly easy to replace and just involve a quarter turn and out they come, no tools required. Here's a demo video showing its features and how to change filter cartridges.
Manufacturers may vary a little in how often filters need to be changed, but the table here is a general guideline for a family of four, where the average person requires around four litres per day. Obviously, smaller families would need to replace filters less frequently, while larger families would need to do it more often. In addition to filters and RO systems, here's a nifty little personal water filtration product you can use to make your tap water a little safer and tastier. Single stage filters like Alia's activated carbon water filter jug are designed to fit into fridge doors and they have a unique spout lid to prevent dust or anything else from getting in. Cartridges are super easy to replace and last around two months. The filter is a silver impregnated coconut activated carbon and sodium free cation exchange resin which can remove larger particles as well as chlorine, pesticides and heavy metals for better tasting and safer water. Here's a short video showcasing its features and how to swap out the filter cartridge. Along similar lines is the Alia ShowerMade Dechlorinating Shower Filter. Obviously this one isn't so much about improving drinking water quality, but more about removing chlorine for a chlorine free showering experience. It uses a natural coconut activated carbon filter and calcium sulphite to remove chlorine from tap water quickly. The filter is good for around 6000 litres or around 3 months for a household of 3 to 5 people. Replacement is just a matter of unscrewing the cap and the green ring can then be set to indicate when the next filter change is due. Here's a short video explaining the ShowerMade's features. Okay, to summarise, we've looked at various water filtration systems and things to be aware of before installing one, such as the quality of your current water, as well as excessive or not enough water pressure at the tap. Not to mention the ongoing costs and ease of maintenance. We've looked at the simple and effective EZEC systems and the advantages and disadvantages of reverse osmosis systems. RO filters may seem to be the ultimate solution in the quest for healthy water, but that may not necessarily be what you want or suit your requirements or circumstances, and they do have a couple of drawbacks. 
While they remove almost all impurities, they also eliminate healthy minerals. Depending on the feed water quality, for many people a three-stage solution with active carbon and biological filters that preserve minerals while removing contaminants is a better choice. Even a simple filter jug like Alia's activated carbon water filter jug may be enough for some cases. You don't necessarily have to have the most expensive and complex system to enjoy healthy water. Just determine what type of contaminants you prefer to eliminate from your tap water, whether you can install it yourself or we will need to pay someone to do it, or even if you can have a permanent installation at your premises. For more information about Eileen Water products, please visit our website at www.eileenwater.com.au. In our Where to Buy section there, you'll find a number of shops stocking our products, as well as lots of plumbers who can help you out if you need help to install your water filter. The blog articles there have more detail about the topics discussed today, plus more. If you'd like more information or you'd like to discuss your needs with one of our friendly staff members, please send an email to sales at eileenwater.com.au. Check us out on social media as well. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter under Eileen Water. Thanks for coming today and bye for now.